I don't know about you, but sometimes I just hate those end of the year videos that just pop up all over YouTube. So, uh, here's my end of the year video. <laughs> Okay, so maybe this won't be the typical end of the year video. Maybe it will. I, I hope that it's in some way useful, but it's just some things that I've been thinking about that over the course of this last year, 2021, that I've learned or discovered or rediscovered or in some way had it impressed upon me that, yeah, this is, this is a thing that you really need to remember. One of the biggest problems that I have uh, especially as I get older in modeling, is remembering the things that I know, if that makes sense. There's, there's things that I'll later look at a model and go, oh yeah, I could have done this, and I know how to do that, and there's this technique and this product, and well, you've got this thing down in the drawer that could have done this, and I forget about a lot of those. There have been times that people would you know, I'd show a friend a model and they would say, hey, that looks good. Why didn't you do this? And I'd go, and why didn't I do that? I just completely forgot that you could do that. So sometimes just remembering things uh, it can, can be difficult for me. But I think if we're trying to grow in the process of modeling, there's always going to be things that all the time that we discover, that we learn, that we refine, that we grow upon. You know, like the, the first time you dry brush, well, you basically know how to dry brush. But after a while, you begin to see, if you really work with that technique, you begin to see all of the things that you can do with that and, and that it's more than just this kind of hack for beginners that just gets you past some stuff because you don't want to do some other stuff and so you do this and you find out that it can be a very powerful primary technique. Uh, the, the same way with with the brushes we use or the paints or things like that, even just thinning paints. I, the more I brush paint, the more I learn about how to properly thin paints because that's very important. So hopefully the things that I look at in this video will be some things that may get you thinking about your own modeling process and maybe show you some of the things that I've gleaned from the last year in my own modeling that may be useful to you. That's what I tell myself so I can sleep at night at least. <laughs> now I'm going to do this in kind of a list of favorites, things that that I'm going to call my favorites. And, and that may be a loose term for some of them, um, but that's, that's what I thought uh, it would be fun to do is look at them as my favorites and then kind of explain why. Now my first favorite is my favorite model. This was kind of hard to pin down because if you've been keeping up with my channel, you'll remember I built uh, a Machining Krieger Gladiator which I had a lot of fun with. That is a great kit with lots of opportunities for detail painting and weathering and so many other things. It's a really great model. And there was also that Star Wars Legion uh, Patrol Transport. Man, that was a fun kit. Just an absolutely fun kit. And another one that I would highly recommend. Even if you don't play the game, that's a great one to check out. But when I really started looking at the model that I had such fun with that by the end of the build, I didn't want it to end. That had to be the Warhammer 40K Chimera build that I did earlier this year. The Chimera is a tracked kind of armored personnel carrier vehicle, but I did a resin conversion to make it into a wheeled vehicle. It had six wheels. And that process of building the model and doing the resin conversion, because the resin conversion was so very nice and it, it just went on very easily and it looked cool. And then just going through the painting and the weathering. And I stretched it out over six episodes for the video series, which allowed me to spend a lot of time at each step. And it was just absolutely so much fun. By the time I got to the end, I finally just had to say, okay, you've got to stop so that you can get the video finished because I think I could have kept on 
just adding little details to the model and adding little weathering steps um, and just so many other things. That build, of all the builds that I've done this year, I finished, I did a count, I finished 17 models this year. A couple of them won't appear until 2022, but they're already on my shelf and done. But of all the models I've done this year, that Chimera and the, the resin conversion was called the Aquarius, but I think most people know it by the Chimera. The Chimera was the most fun of any of them I did, and that's the one that if it could have kept going on, I would have been okay with it. All right, next on my list is what I'm calling my favorite non-modeling product. And you know there's a lot of products that we use in our hobby that aren't designed for modeling, but we can make great use of them. And, you know, it's the kind of thing that when we tell others about, they say, oh yeah, that's pretty good, I'll try that. And there's a lot that I use in my day-to-day -day modeling. I mean, everything from toothpicks to Q-tips to... Uh, to thing, you know, things like that, just very ordinary kind of things that are not for modeling, but they have great use in modeling. But I think this year, the, 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 and it's kind of a new thing for me, but the non-modeling product that I've made the most use of and had the most enjoyment from is makeup brushes. And, you know, using those for dry brushes. Now, yeah, there are modeling specific brushes made for that and they work great but there's there's something about going and getting a big old cheap pack of those round fat makeup brushes and doing some dry brushing on a model it will transform your dry brushing now if you like the modeling specific brands stick with them but i've tried them all and i have to tell you that while the modeling specific ones are very nice and they work very well, when you talk about the cost involved, getting a, a cheap pack of makeup brushes is so efficient and they work just as well. They, they, they have all the qualities that the really nice ones do, in my opinion, and they work so nicely. So that's been something that this year I've just really enjoyed using and it's become something that sits on my modeling desk and it's one of those, I have to have this, I can't do without it. And the great thing is, if for some reason, all of the brushes that I have are so beat and battered and worn that I can't use them anymore, well, I just drive up to the dollar store and get a whole nother pack of them again. Even though it's no longer the dollar store, I think it's up to a buck fifty now. But <laughs> I, I can go get a pack of them really cheap and I'm right back in business. Now for my favorite modeling products, something made specifically for modeling that, that, uh, that we use. I think, and, and obviously there's, there's hundreds of products I use in any particular year. You probably do too. So it's hard to narrow them down. But I, I realize that there is one in particular that I have started using more than I ever had in the past. And I really like it. And it's become my preferred way of doing things and that's rattle can primers. Now for years I used my airbrush to prime and it works great. There's no problem with priming with the airbrush at all. But rattle can primers are so, so simple. They're so quick. They're so effective. I go out into our garage. I open the door of the garage just a little bit, put on my respirator and I hold up whatever it is. I get a rubber glove on this hand and I hold it up and I take my rattle can and I, you know, you psh, 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 and in just a, a minute or two, everything is covered. Everything's ready to go. I can put the lid on the rattle can. I can set the stuff down for a few minutes. There's no cleaning up of the airbrush. There's no, uh, there's no thinning. There's no mixing. It just works. It's not to say that I always use rattle can priming, but it has become my go-to method of priming, and unless a model has a lot of shapes and nooks and crannies, or I need a particular color that I don't have in the rattle can, it's always going to be the rattle can because it's so easy, it's so fast, and it's so efficient and lets me get on to other things. Now, as with modeling products, there's a lot of modeling companies that we interact with, 
And there, there are so many out there, it's really hard to narrow them down, of course. Um, there's paint makers, there's model makers, there's tool makers, there's weathering product makers. It, there's, there's so many manufacturers out there. But as I thought about this area of what has impressed me over the last year, I started thinking about, okay, who has impressed me with the consistency of their products? Now, certainly companies like Tamiya or Mr. Color, uh, they have great consistency over the years. I've used, for example, for Tamiya, I've used them over the years many times because their products just don't fail. They're great products and I really enjoy using them. But I've started using products from a company that I think is fairly new or at least new to me, and that's VMS. Now, VMS, they make a lot of, uh, I guess, what you'd call auxiliary products. They make various thinners and decal setting solutions and oil enhancing uh, products that help make the use of oils dry faster and make sure that they're matte. They have a wide range of products available. And I, I heard Martin Kovach from Night Shift Scale Models talk about using their oil expert product to help your oils dry faster. And I, I started using that and I really liked it. And then I heard about another product they had. So I tried that and I really liked it. I think it was their satin finish. And over the year, I've just been picking up a few more products and a few more products from them. And every single one works really top of class for every one of them. They're all great values. Um, they're shipped I don't know if they're shipped from the Poland, from Poland or the UK, but the shipping is very, very reasonable. In fact, in many ways, the shipping from them, even coming here to the US, is cheaper than ordering from some companies in the US. So shipping is not a problem. But every one of them, it's become a company along with Tamiya and along with Mr. Color that I don't hesitate to just recommend the product simply because of the company even if I've never tried the product, and you say, well, that may be a dangerous thing. It can be, but after a while, the reputation precedes the product. And I've been so impressed with VMS this year that I would not hesitate to say, try anything from VMS. Not that the other companies don't have products that aren't good, but everything from VMS just seems to be top of the line. Now, there's a lot of phases in building a model. There's the, the construction phase. There's the the priming phase, there's painting, there's weathering, all of that stuff. I don't, I don't make it any secret that my favorite part of building a model is weathering it. And so weathering it is what everything else is directed to. If, if I ever became insanely rich, I think I would hire a staff of people to build the models and prime them and base paint them for me because I don't mind doing that. And sometimes it can be fun, of course, but I just want to weather stuff. That's what I really like. So weathering is always a focus of mine. And I use a lot of weathering products. I use acrylics. I use oils. I use enamels, pigments, pencils. You name it, I'll try it. And I want to learn it. And I want to figure out how to make sure that that is a viable tool in my toolbox when I'm considering what I want to do on a model. So Again, this is one of those that was kind of hard to narrow down, but I started looking at what products do I use as kind of a go-to in more cases than anything else. And I think when it comes to my favorite weathering product, it's Vallejo model washes. Now you may think, why a model wash? Well, one, I don't use them that much as a wash. While they work great as a wash, I use them more and more as the foundation for almost everything I do with weathering. Because yeah, I can put oils and enamels on and I can blend those and they work great, but speed is something that's very important to me. And acrylics dry so much faster. And the Vallejo model washes, combined with just a little bit of water, allow me to play with their opacity a lot and make applications of dirt and dust and mud and everything else. I can mix it in real quickly with some pigments. It can be a pigment binder. It can be a pigment fixer. I use it as a glaze, as a tint, as a way of thinning acrylic paints. It has so many uses and I'm constantly 
reaching up on my shelf, grabbing a bottle of it, shaking it up, putting a few drops in my palate, putting it on, hit it with the hairdryer and move on. It has been such a great product to use and learning to use it effectively has really sped up the process for me, allowed me to get the look that I wanted and taken away a lot of the, the, the wait time that might be associated with other products. It's been really, really good to me. And I wanna, I wanna make sure this year that I get the whole line of them so that I can have all of those colors sitting right there and available and make use of them at any time. Now, as sort of a follow-on to that, but it wasn't exclusively tied to the use of Vallejo model washes, there's what I'm gonna call the favorite thing I discovered that I actually already knew and that's making use of opacity. Now, I've always worked with and understood and used opacity in my work, but it's, it's been this year that I seem to have jumped in how I think about it in a, in a way that has been very helpful for me to really start working with low opacity layers. You can call them glazes, you can call them whatever you want, but it's just working with opacity and seeing how effective and how, how much working with opacity in your paints adds to the depth of finish. It's not just about making smooth transitions. Sometimes making use of opacity can be in areas that are kind of harsh in terms of their transition, but to really provide some distinction in areas on the model. More and more, and it's not just smooth paint either. Quite often, you know, we're told, rightly, thin your paints down. Well, when you put it on thinner, it doesn't cover as well, so it takes a few more coats. But it's more than just that kind of opacity. It's the ability to put some paint on, to put some highlights and some shadows, and then use another paint or one of those Vallejo model washes or anything like that and thin it down and use the opacity to get effects that you would not otherwise get with the paint. To, to be able to, uh, for example, uh, using contrast paints from Citadel uh, to do a lot of highlights and shadows with, with white and black and all sorts of gray in between and then going in with very thin coats of say contrast paint or again those Vallejo model washes or any paint and putting it over it and shifting everything towards a certain color so that it reads as a certain color but you've done all of the hard work with just black and white which is really simple to see and to make sure you're getting it looking like you're wanting. So the use of opacity has really transformed what I feel I'm able to accomplish on a model now in a way that just a year ago, I don't know that I would have been able to articulate in the same way. So if you're not already thinking in terms of opacity with your paints, with your other modeling products, start thinning them down a little more. Start lowering the opacity and seeing what happens when you build it up and when you, when you give multiple layers of it and look at how it changes the depth of finish, it's really transforming. And this next category, I'm gonna call my favorite channel, uh, specifically my favorite YouTube channel. M my routine in any day is to get up very early, about 4.30 every morning, and I work on models until I have to go to my day job. I come home from my day job, have dinner, uh, me and my wife go on a walk, uh, we spend some time together. When we get back from that, I sit down and do some more modeling. But before I turn in for the night, I always like to watch some YouTube videos about modeling because it helps me extend my knowledge. It helps me find new things, new ways uh, to do things, to refine things. Even if it's a video that I've seen before, quite often I'll note something that I had not noted previously and it's very helpful to me. And that's pretty much exclusively all I watch. I, 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 I'm an old guy. I tend to lump all of those things into what I call TV, even though I'm watching them on my Chromebook. So I don't watch what I generically call TV. I don't watch broadcast TV. I don't watch Netflix. I don't watch Hulu. I don't watch movies. I just, I don't. I, I don't have the patience anymore to sit and watch stuff like that. 
Unless it's Star Wars Disney waiting on that book of Boba Fett, ain't we? Oh, yeah. But um, anyway, I watch a lot of YouTube. And there's a lot of great channels out there. And, I mean, some of my favorites are like Night Shift Scale Models with Martin Kovach. Um, uh, Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy. I, I, I love watching his work. Lincoln Wright's Paint on Plastic. Uh, I count him as a friend and I'm thankful that I can. And he's, he's got such great work that's so helpful. And there's, and, and there's so many others that I watch and that I really enjoy and that I learn from and that I appreciate. And, and I, I, I hate that I can't even list all of them out. It would just take too long. But quite often, it'll be an evening where there's no new videos out. And I'm looking for maybe a particular topic or something like that. And maybe I just don't find anything new that I think is going to be particularly helpful. Or I, I'm just not in the mood for certain things. And I just want to pick something that that I always find helpful, I always find enjoyable to watch. And the channel that I continually go back to over and over and over again, that I will re-watch videos over and over and over and always learn something, and that's Sarastro's painting. Now, Sarastro's painting is Mark Sarastro, and I, I was blessed to interview him. Uh, I think it was late in 2020, or maybe it was earlier this year in 2021, I forget. But he's, he's a wonderful guy. He has such a very calming voice. He even composes his own music for the videos that he does. But he paints miniature figures, and he does it in such an educational kind of way. Not that others don't. But I've just found that when I consistently watch his work, I learn from it and I always come away thinking, I want to go do this right now. It always inspires me. And again, it's not that the others don't do that, but his work is the one that will, if there's, I, I will watch anything that comes out that's brand new. I'll watch that a couple of times on its first day. But when I'm thinking, okay, you know, what do I want to watch? He's going to be in my playlist at least once every single day because I enjoy his work so much. I learn so much from it. To watch it at the end of the day, it's just very relaxing. It, it helps. Not that I want to say it puts me to sleep, but it's, it's not loud. It's not jarring. It's not in your face. It's just very matter of fact and calming and instructional, and it's some great stuff. So if you've not checked out Sarastro's painting, I, I highly recommend you do so. Now, all those others that I mentioned, check them out too. But Sarastro's painting to me is really something special. Well, by my count, that's seven things. I tried to come up with a top 10 list, but I, I, the other three things that I came up with, I thought, okay, those are kind of stretching it. And, uh, and that's going to bump you up on the time limit that I like to try and get my videos in under, which is about half an hour. So I'll, I'll stop here in terms of listing things. But this, this is a great time when we're thinking about the end of one year and a new year coming up to just reflect on what models have we built in the last year? What products have we used? What techniques have we used? Where have we grown? Where would we like to grow? And it kind of helps reset where we're at in our modeling and give us a fresh perspective on the year coming up. Yeah, it's just an arbitrary date. I get that. But I think it's important that every now and then we look back and use the information from what we see where we look back. And then we apply that to going forward. And that's going to help us grow in the model. And as I as, as I always try to emphasize, growth in the hobby equates to having fun. And having fun is what this hobby is about. So all of these things that I've talked about, ultimately, the reason they're important to me is because they've contributed to my fun and my enjoyment of the hobby. And that is worth it. Well, I guess there's one more favorite that I have, and that is everybody who watches my videos. I know that you know, this is what you expect people to say. But 
I really, truly mean it. It means a lot to me to know that everyone who watches this video is taking some amount of their precious time, their time in a day. We only have 24 hours in a day. And to know that somebody would take some of their time from their day to watch something that this idiot in North Carolina, USA does, really means a lot to me. Especially when you leave comments in the videos and things like that. That just goes above and beyond all of it and lets me know, you know, that, that to know you're watching and to know you're finding it helpful and to know that, that I'm hopefully contributing in some way to your enjoyment of the hobby, that's why I do it. Yeah, I would like for the numbers to be higher and, you know, I'd love to be one of those guys that does the video that announces, you know, well, I'm quitting my day job and I'm going to be a full-time modeler because I have so much YouTube and Patreon support. I'd love that. It's probably not ever going to happen. I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep modeling. I'm going to keep having fun. But it's the encouragement I get from knowing people are watching the videos and they're getting something from them and they're actually spending some of their time to do so. That means a lot to me. So thank you all very much for the time that you spend with me. It means the world to me. Now you know the rest of the stuff. There's the subscribe link over here. Please click that if you've not already done so. There's also a little bell icon. Hit that so you'll know when I have new videos come out. There's some comment space down below. Please leave a comment. That would really mean a lot to me. I love hearing from people. I also like it if you would. Uh, I'd also like it if you would uh, hit the little like button. That helps me grow the channel, and so I would be most grateful for that. And if you haven't done so in the past, maybe consider sharing my videos on social media. Yeah, I know I'm kind of begging a little bit, but <laughs> it's an honest begging. I, if they're helpful to you, they might be helpful to other people, and so please consider sharing them on your social media. I'd be a great. I'd be a grateful for that. There's also links down below to uh, my website and social media and, of course, Patreon. If you would like to support the work that I do, please take a look at that link that takes you to Patreon and see what I offer for supporters. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much for the support you give. It is a blessing to me and my family because it allows me to do things that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. We just couldn't afford it without your support. So thank you for making this that I do, all of this back here, all of this that I do, you make it possible. And you make it possible to do in a way that, that is not negatively impacting my family. That's very important. So thank you so very much. And I hope you enjoy the benefits you get as a supporter. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.